This is the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. We've got the Premier in the house. We certainly do. Um, last week we had our, uh, the Prime Minister in, our yep. Anthony Albanese, and one thing that was going around at the, at the time was getting him to promise that the GST won't be changed and WA will still get their fair share. Whenever there seems to be any uh, Prime Minister or Premier, you've got to fight for it, or, mm. you know, is the is the Prime Minister going to honour his pledge about WA and the GST? Is that just made up for the media? Yep. yep. Okay, right. It so there's no, th- there's no threat to it at all. Albo's really? locked in. He's been locked in forever. Um, but he, if there's he, a change of government, will that change? Well, no. If there's a change of government, well, then it can. So it's locked yeah, in yeah. for the next three years. Yeah. So yeah. that's, you know, the, the real question you have to ask is, particularly at the next federal election, who will defend the GST deal? Mm. Yeah. That's the question for Western Australians. The only guy in, in national politics today that questions the um, the GST deal is Peter Dutton. Yeah. And, you know, so that's what that's the that's the reality. But, but say, say Dutton got in, right? So say, mm. say, say Dutton gets in. There is a huge belief that WA propped up the last election, yeah? Oh, well, yeah one one over the last election. We played a crucial so, role. Yeah. So if you, if you took that away from us, you would have, an ent- well, I'm thinking, a majority of the state not voting for your partner. Do they put that put that in the mix? Or? Well, 100%, th- th- they no. should, obviously. Yeah. That's it up to the voter, isn't it? Poli- it would yeah. be political suicide in Western Australia. It would be. So yeah. if, under the original deal, we would get around about $800 million out of $86 billion <gasps> in terms of the overall GST Pool. That's so, staggering. And that is absolutely outrageous. That that, yes. that that was what the system actually set us up to do. So the deal that Mark McGowan um, managed to get uh, for WA was so important. Was it fair to say Colin Barnett had been working on that for a while? Because I know everyone I takes, know. Uh, yeah. you know, everyone takes, you know, um, you know, they claim the the battle. You know, they yeah, claim yeah. that we when, won yeah, that when it's finally sure. done. Oh, yeah. been I feel like, like it. Yeah. 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 My oh, hands are in there too. Yeah. Mm. And don't forget, Matthias Corman had a big role yeah. in playing that yes. as well, yeah. working yeah. with Mark on on, on that particular That's outcome. True. We've got to defend it. You know, it, I, it, all the other state premiers sort of look at me going, "Oh, you've got all this GST," and I said, mm. "Well, hang on, we surrendered thirteen billion dollars yes. over the last five years of GST to you guys." Yeah. Now, billion. if you want to give me thirteen billion dollars, you're welcome to it. And we're still getting less proportionally than everybody else, aren't we? So we get. 70 cents in the dollar. Uh, The next state to receive the next lowest amount is Queensland at 92 cents. So So we do the heavy lifting. Yeah, for sure. Can you explain to me, because we've always, because we know our argument and it's like, well, it's not fair. The math doesn't work out. Yeah. Can you let me know what is what is the what are the other states? What, why do they think they're right? Because when you look at it on paper, it is unfair the deal we are still getting. So how can they think that what we're getting now, which is slightly fairer than before, well, when we were getting like twenty seven cents or something? Well, yeah. look, they, they look at us and say, "Oh, you've got all these minerals. That's not fair." And I say, "Well, no, we've got these minerals, and we we have the prosperity from that because we did the hard work to set those industries up." To exactly. Make sure it's that also yeah. quite a mining yeah. industry. And also they. Yeah. They might have them in. We'll just dig and find yes. them. We just dug. That's all. We just got a shovel and dug and found them. Like, yeah. you go digging. There's a lot of mining but in at, Queensland. But, but at the end of the day, we're the ones that protected our finances. Yes. We're, we're in a strong financial position. Most other states are running de- huge debts. Oh, defic- Victoria. Defic- deficit oh, budget. Yeah. And so they're desperate for cash. And yeah. they'll come and try and take ours if it helps prop themselves up. Mm. It's so funny, you know, we're a one Australia, apparently, and then yeah. over the COVID thing, everyone splintered, and then that was the demise of the government. What do you mean? Everybody else hated us. <laughs> well, they were yeah. all gone. Everyone's gone each yeah. other, and we all went our separate ways. And yeah. sna- same with this. Yep. You're under pressure. You're backed into the corner, whether it's New South Wales mm. or Victoria in particular. At this point in time, they're gunning for us. We're gunning for them. The, the fact of the matter is that Western Australia is the engine room of the nation's economy. Mm. That's true. Al- Albo gets that. He understands that if WA is doing well, the nation does well in terms of its, of its economy. So mm. we'll continue to receive his backing. Love that. And we'll, we can go on and do some great things. Good on you, mate. Mm. Anything else that we need to know about? Yeah, anything, anything? Any big news? Anything? Any... Because usually when you come in or yeah. any premier comes in um, in the past, um, you leave here and then suddenly... You, a big announcement you, you about something. You tell everyone you're a robot or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you can say that on our show. Um, no, look, we'll just keep going. We're just, just going to continue to keep the economy away. strong. We're going to make cost of living relief um, measures where for the oh, people please. who are doing it tough. And, of course, we're just driving the housing um, situation as much as we can. Yep. And the next Which big is... event you're going to bring here? What oh, have we got? No. See, coming. I can't tell you that, but we love. Is exclusive, there something good? Is we there... love exclusive content. Uh, we love bringing really quirky things to Western Australia, so the rest of Australia has to come and have a look at so it. So watch this space. Drag them over here. So watch this.
this space. We've got some great, great events coming up. This is the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. We are inspired by Ricky Martin, who mm. has admitted that he loves feet a lot and he can think of nothing better than licking somebody else's feet for hours. For hours. So we're discussing when you are with someone, when you discover that they might be into something a mm. little bit unusual. Was that too much for you or is it now part of your permanent life? Well, let's ask Lena. Hello. Hi, how are you guys? Great, Good, Lena. Lena. Okay, Great. walk us through it. What's the story? Okay, now you got a bucket because <laughs> you're the queasy one. Um, licking eyeballs. He used to, like, oh, oh. we were just kissing and then he'd all of a sudden, like, go up my face. Yeah. Oh, and then oh, lick your eyeballs. eyeballs. And he would actually lick around my eyeball while it was open. Oh! <laughs> I can't imagine that's good so, for, no, uh, for your eyes. Okay, wait there. So, uh, you know when some people, like, you know, ran their tongue in your ear, mm. right? So, yes. that just, that all that just sounds like it's just wetness. Mm. Um, and yeah. you can so, hear it because it's so, right so, there. So, but, but would he just naturally slide his tongue into your eyelids or would he yeah. open, your, them like, open. open them with his hand and then just would be give, to it close whole, your give it a whole ball well, lick? He would want my eyes a little bit open so he could get his tongue around like the groove between the eyelid and the... Lena, were you into it, Lena? <laughs> I was like, no, I wasn't. It only happened a couple of times and I thought it was going to pop out. It, it only awful. happened How a couple uncomfortable of was that, Lena? It was really uncomfortable. And then I had, because I'm that OCD, I had to get him to do the other one too because the other one was the <laughs> <It> sad was... <laughs> thing. I'm sorry. I've got an OCD. I'm sorry. Thing, I'm sorry. Surely. Because, 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 be out because, of because the left side of me was violated and like, the other side of me to be violated <laughs> as well. 100%. Hundred percent, Nathan. Hundred <laughs> percent. How, how long? How long would a lick go for? Would it be like, yeah? Well, as long as I could stand it, really, it was only uh, wouldn't even be three seconds. It was awful. Just the three Look, second. I'm no optometrist, just a... but I would imagine that the potential for eye infections would be high. That'd be huge, mm. that. Yeah, you got all sorts of bacteria in your in your mouth. Yeah. Lena, that was a tough moment well, that, for you. That's a, that was a tough moment for all we, of us. We weren't expecting that, Lena. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Jess is in Belmont. Morning, Jess. Morning. Hi, Jess. Right. Yes. Okay, Jess, talk us through it. What's going on? Um, so it's my current partner. Yeah. Um, and he has an obsession with belly button. <gasps> yes, right. Um, so, yeah, he just, every time we get home, he'll lay in bed, whatever, yeah. and he's in there in my belly button with his finger. With his finger? Love just it. feeling it. Just so, feeling so it. So just, just like, yeah. you think? So, but yeah, he, but he, is, he, is he lying there sort of like next to you and just sort of like lying back with his head on the pillow, just like, like just, I don't yeah. want to say fingering your belly button. But, <laughs> but that's yeah, what no, that thing you just did. It's oh, quite literally fingering my belly button. Yeah, so, yeah. Just, but, but so, he's, so he's not right down close on it, looking at it while he's doing it. It's just more oh, of a sort sometimes. of... Oh, sometimes. Right. Just feel. And, yeah. and does, is it just the finger or does he like to get other... Like kiss it, for example, Nathan? No, something... yeah, he'll, he'll get his tongue right in there as well. Right in mm. there. Yeah. Right in yeah. there. Would he and love... he'll put his finger in and then he'll smell his finger after. Oh! Jess. Okay, how do you feel about We're this, still talking Jess? about belly buttons, right? Jess, how do you feel about it? Are you okay with it? <laughs> Whatever floats his boat, so, yeah. Whatever floats good his boat. Right. Okay, Jess, so when it first started happening, right, so it would have happened once, you would have thought, oh, this is, you know, That's a bit of fun. Cute. And then it happened again and again and again. So then suddenly you realised it was an established thing. Did you have to discuss what was happening? I mean, I just said, oh, so you're a belly button guy. Mm. That's interesting. Yeah. You, know? you say that like it's a thing. Yeah. That's not a thing, no. though, is it's it? A thing. Well, it's, it's a, thing. a thing. So when people are out, guys are out, and um, someone's wearing a midriff or a small top or bikinis, yeah. usually guys' um, eyes will go you know, up to the boob to the area boobs, or down yeah. to the bum area. Does he? Do you watch him fixate on people's belly buttons? He's prob- Yeah, probably. He's probably imagining what their belly button smells like, mm. to be honest. Wow. <laughs> is yours an outie or an innie? Mine's an innie. innie. Yeah. Does, he innie. Like, yeah. does he like an outie? I don't think he'd like an outie. You know what? Because no. that's the case. You can't it stick your gay, finger in an outie. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Jess. Thank you. The sniffing of the finger was the worst. Hey, Mary. Mary. Oh, Mary. Okay, talk to us. <laughs> Okay, so I used I, I briefly dated this guy for a couple of months, um, and uh, well, when we became intimate, I realised that he was had quite a large package, which was good for him. Yeah. yeah. Um, however, he had this weird fetish yeah. where he felt the need to be verbally abused, being told that it was small. <gasps> oh, so oh like, really? Really weird because it's like, why would you want to do that? Most guys yes. want it to be big, like you so know. Um, anyway, be so, shamed. Exactly. He wanted to be shamed. And, of course, I went through um, – I majored in drama school, so oh, – okay. <laughs> 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 
exactly. Here's my opportunity. So every time that we were intimate, I'd have to put on this act and say to him how disgusting it was and it's how so tiny. small he was. And yeah, you should be so ashamed of yourself. How could you even look at that and live with yourself? And so anyway, I had to do, put this full on drama act, uh, which he <laughs> really, really got loved. into. And, he loved and it. I mean, I would, I would try to focus on how he reacted because of course I'm just doing this for him. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. pick up on my drama skills. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah, it just got so weird because I felt so horrible to say it, even though I knew it wasn't true. But he did liked you, it. Yeah. Yes. Did you laugh at some of the things you came up with? You're like, gee, that was a good one, Mary. Oh, no, she studied drama, I, Sean. It's know, a craft. You know what, <laughs> what was funny is, like, I mean, apart from improvising on the spot, like, mm. you know, I found myself when I was driving to his place or, like, I knew I was going to meet up with him, I found myself, you know, practicing rehearsing. what I was going to say. Because <laughs> you're a professional. Basically. That's <laughs> why, Mary, you're a professional. <laughs> so, Mary... Oh, well, I wanted, to, I wanted to nail it, you yeah, know. Yeah, that's of right. Course. Okay. Okay. In, <laughs> in every way. So before this <laughs> happened, so he had the discussion with you beforehand. He said, this is what I would like you to do. No, no, not at all. Like, okay. I would not, never have expected it. And, of course, um, you know, it just kind of happened when it happened. And I was like, oh. So he said, it sort of said in the, in the act, he said, oh, hey, why don't you say this? And then from that point on, when you did it the first time, it was expected? Yeah. So so basically he said, like, I had, I said, I had to say to him, like, what do you mean? And he said, okay, we'll just say this or this. And I go, okay. And okay. then okay. I thought, and then you okay, really well, got into the I, role. I can make that better. Yeah. <laughs> I could make that better. <laughs> you did a script that. rewrite. Well, imagine was, it in an Elizabethan theatre. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> was the thing with oh, him then he was able to then prove you wrong? Is that the whole thought process? Well, yeah. It, it was, I think it was like a, a, a reverse psychology thing yeah. for him because he knew it was. And I, it was just weird. It was just all psychology. But he really got excited over it yeah. and I was just like yeah well whatever floats your boat I guess <laughs> uh, you're telling him how tiny and disgusting it how was. long how long did you go with him for uh, I was Couple only with him for about yeah. three months about yeah. three months um, max yeah, Three like after, after that second month, I was like, eh, yeah. Well, you collected your Oscar and you were out of there. <laughs> <laughs> she yeah, fine tuned your craft. Maybe I should have gone for feet. I yeah, don't know. yeah. It that's longer. interesting, isn't <laughs> it? Amazing. Thanks, Mary. Nathan, Nat, and Sean podcast. It's a really good moment when you realise that other people out there agree with you. And we've been talking about Harley Reid since last year when he first came yeah, to Perth. Yeah. Now, firstly, uh, I think it's fantastic that uh, the Eagles have got so much faith in him. I really well, he was number one draft pick, right? Yeah. So, you know, yeah. you know he's, he's yeah. a good player, but and he has not played a game yet. Across from that as well, everyone says that's met him. He says he's yes. such a really great guy. So yes. none of this is a dig on Harley. No, 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 no absolutely, Nate. And I hope, I hope he's the best player that West Coast Eagles oh, have ever had, 100%. right? And I hope he fulfills every dream. Yeah that he has personally. But settle down. He hasn't played a game But yet. we were saying wholeheartedly, leave him the hell alone, yes. for God's sake. He's been the back page of the paper, I believe, something like 32 times in 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 close to 40 days. Yes. That's too... That's, Think about that. That's too often. For well, somebody who hasn't played a game yet. Peter Sumich is back from a holiday mm. just recently, and he thought he'd pen an article about this because he worked for the West Australian mm. at the time. Good morning, Summer. Morning. How are you? <laughs> when, when we read this article, we were like... <laughs> so, so you've resigned from the West over this, yeah? Is that right? Yeah, look, I have. Um, before I went away, I was fortunate enough to go to the Super Bowl, which was one of the best experiences in oh, Vegas wow. I've ever, yes. ever had. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, yeah, getting back, uh, before I left, I wrote an article because I... I was with you uh, as well. There's too much hype around this kid, and, and I wanted to take a little bit of pressure off him. Look, yeah. I, I think the kid's going to be a terrific player. Don't mm. get me yeah. wrong. He's going to be very, very good. And I, I said that in the article, but it might take a few years. And, and everyone's comparing him to Chris Judd and this and that. And, and I just said in the article, I said, hang on, he's no Chris Judd. I, I, I've seen Chris Judd from day one. And I haven't seen a player ever play that well at the age of 19 and 20 um, in his first few years. And I don't think this kid will reach the heights of a Chris Judd. So mm. I said he's no Chris Judd. And he's the country boy, still got a bit of puppy fat on him. He's got to work through a couple of free seasons. <laughs> yeah. To, to, you know, and to get AFL fit. Yes, We've and they're all valid honest, points, you know, but that, it is akin to treason, obviously, what you've been spouting here, Summer. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly. And, and he's been, he, he's even said himself, he's been. Living at Hungry Jacks a, a little bit over the last two or three years. The burgers are better. Like all they're, they're a sponsor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Like we all did back in the day. But um, look, I just thought, you know, I thought it was well over the top. And I said, look, he's going to be a terrific player. But he's no Chris Judd. He needs to do this, this and that. Play me off half back. I don't think that's right. He should be in the midfield. Yep. He might even need a spin in the waffle. 
you know, um, to develop to, his game. Played one game. His first game was in the waffle. He didn't play round one. Mm. So you know, the expectations was, in my opinion, too great. Anyway, the West said oh, I was a bit over the top, and what? I said, okay, if you're going to do that, I'll see you later. So they weren't going to print it at all, or they wanted you to rewrite? No, it? they didn't print it. I, yeah. I picked it off to them, um, and they didn't want to print it. They wanted to muck around with the wording and that. And I said, yeah. no, no. I, I, one thing I did over the last 18 months with my articles, they they were written by myself, and, yes. and they were, you know, yeah, if you're, your putting your, if you're putting your name yeah, to it, you want yeah. it to be your opinion. Hey, yeah. Silma, so, so there's two two ways of thinking about this, right? So either like that Harley's in the paper and, you know, online so much um, for this publication because it's clickbait, right? So people yes. will read it. Yeah. But on the other side, I mean, like the clickbait of you writing an article like yes. that would have been huge clickbait. So do you think there's an an agenda behind why there he's, he's in the paper to, to so much? To hold him much? up as the messiah. Because I'm like thinking, because I don't know too much about football, but I'm thinking that he is the as good as Chris Judd and all that sort of stuff because of yeah, the amount, because of, the, of, the yeah, amount of, the of attention amount of he gets. Mm. I, I and I that think... sort of could set him up for disaster There's... because everyone's yeah. you know, yes. inflated Unre- unreal expectations. expectations. Yeah, I agree yeah. with that. No, so, sorry, Summer, just for a second, I was just going to say yeah. there's a couple of people who have played football at a high level that there will never, ever be a negative or a, a negative article written about them yeah. because there yeah. seems to be an investment at one end or the other. But you're right, Nathan. That would have People yeah. would have read some of yeah. Yes, yeah. that's right. Yeah. So what do you think, Summer? Oh, look, I would have had a, a, some criticism for sure on it. Going, oh, you don't, don't say that. You know, this is our Messiah and this yes. and that. Which, like I said to you, in the article, I said he's going to be a very good player. Mm. I think in two years' time... Um, in two or three years' time, it's going to reach the height that we're all hoping. But right now, don't don't put the pressure on yeah. the kid by putting him on the back page for 30 times and doing this <laughs> and doing that. Now, I, I know West Coast are trying to probably pump it up and um, for the membership and for the fans and all that, but enough's enough. You know, we, we there's more to worry about. We've got another team in Fremantle. You know, they're going quite well at the moment. We've got, you know, West Coast got other injuries. You know, let's talk about all that and leave the kid alone. Don't yeah. You? You, you might run him out of town. That's yeah. The other yeah. Thing. I, I was, let him play a game don't, of football don't first. Run him out of town yeah. Because you're putting too much pressure on him. Yeah. yeah. It is hard to believe we're just saying 30 odd times back page. Oh, yeah, that's like, outright. In, in the off season. It's it. the off season. Yeah. Football is an even front of mind. Yeah. It's extraordinary. And, uh, yeah. Put hey, the bison look, on the back page. Yeah, he's in there more than the recipe at... of the day. And that's the recipe <laughs> of each day. <laughs> Nathan, Nat, and Sean in podcast form. We love this time of year because it means that Sculpture by the Sea is happening at Cottesloe Beach and everybody gets down, has a good old look. Um, and every year we speak to the founding director, David Handley, yeah. and tell him that that's no, uh, all those sculptures are no good. Good morning, David. Good morning. 20 years on and finally Nova's worked out the name Sculpture by I know. the Sea. Not I was sculpture. very careful, yep. David. Yes, well David. Done. It's but, not but, plural. But to be honest, it is wrong because there are sculptures yeah, by the more, sea. Yeah, there's more than one, so David. So actually you're wrong. <laughs> David. It's the art form, guys. It's the art form. Da- David, <laughs> I, I want to say I think we should start positive this year. Yes, okay. Okay. There are some yeah, you amazing. Did, and I for it. There are some amazing artworks this year. Mm. There really are. Yeah, they are. Um, uh, yeah, there is cool one show. called Shape of Water um, by um, a guy from Japan. I think it's very, <laughs> say it's his very, name, Nathan. It's, oh, okay. <laughs> Haruyuki uh, uh, Uchida. 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 Yeah. Uchida? yeah. 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 Anyway, that one's really nice. Um, this one here, Cody, will be a um, by Cody. It's called Dave. That will be a real hit. Why do you explain to everyone what that is? It's a rather rotund man with a um, circular life floating around his belly. Uh, which has a unicorn coming off the front of it. It's like him coming out you of can the buy seat. those floaters at BCA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. A, it's a very, that's a very Instagrammable one, isn't it? That's a great it? one. Yeah, yeah. This one here is really nice for at night time. It's um, called a bed of oysters, and it seems to be a lighting net uh, with a little um, uh, sort of plastic-made oysters, David. Yeah, actually, that's a beautiful work. It's among the rocks on the groin, mm, and yeah. they are sh- oyster shells made from plastic been retrieved from the ocean. It's actually stunning. That looks um, beautiful. A couple of artists from Sydney. You guys, I'm getting nervous now. You've been too nice. <laughs> well, <laughs> Dave, Dave, I've got to no. say, I was down there yesterday. There was one yes. by Sam Hopkins that was the silver one, and I reckon that would be sold already, would it? The small version has been. And you know how he makes that? 
Well, no. Sam's actually installing the, the sculptures. He's part of our crew. He uses water pressure mm. to expand the metal. It's quite an extraordinary yeah, right. process wow. that he's really starting to perfect. Just um, a young bloke from Perth in his mid twenties. Oh well, that's yeah. uh, that'd yeah. be worth a fortune yeah. too. James Voller, the housing crash. That's very interesting. Yes, it yeah, is. that's not bad. That, no. like that. It looks that, like that a high rise building or an apartment block that some collapsed into the ground. Yeah, and it's made of little tiles and. They're sort of like these remnants of these high-rise apartment blocks that are, um, are sticking out of the ground, representing the, the fact that you know housing is a bit of a problem for a lot yes. of people. Yeah, there's a couple it's of deep. Instagrammable ones as well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. One of them will be, um, I think, um, Sean Henry. He's from England. It's called Seated Man. It's very realistic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Realistic. a man sitting on a bench. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that one there's going to go well. And I think well. the, the uh, Belga grass trees yep. as well is a beautiful yep. piece too. Oh, yeah. the yes. Belga grass trees is absolutely yes. beautiful by um, a local Aboriginal artist. Yes, um, Darren but, Egan. Yeah. Yes. And that's stunning. There's going to end up being 20 of those. Oh, and if right. people were to come along and be part of the weaving of the fronds, we're adding to them throughout the exhibition. Oh, wow. And well, I'll be back. Weekend, yeah, yeah Sean, last, Sean will be right now. Fronds. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the but, last Friday and the last Sunday evening as the sun goes down, yeah. so that's the 15th and 17th of March, we're having a, a dance and music performance amongst those girls. Oh, well. oh that's okay. nice. Now, from Denmark, there's one called I Believe I Can Fly. There's a box in front mm. of it. Are they supposed to be wings? Are people going to be able to stand on that box and take a great selfie? That's exactly it by Ben mm. Dushashevsky, and he's, uh, don't ask me to say that again, um, <laughs> and he he's um, also out here for about a month working on the exhibition. Really nice guy. And, uh, yeah, huge wings, five metres high. Mm. And you stand on a little box that's in front of them and have your shot taken. Beautiful. David, there was one that I didn't like, and it was right front and square on the beach uh, If when you go down the stairs, and it's the one where it's by Leonardo somebody. DiCaprio. Uh, <laughs> and he's just at the end of a boat with his hat. No. Yeah. There, it, had a, it was like a ball at the end of it, and but it had had like a plastic bag around it yesterday, and I thought, nah. Yeah, that, that's called being installed. The tough lets would be installed. No, it's a giant slingshot. It's as if this oh, huge pebble has been flung out of the earth yeah. and it's straining at the uh, at the leash, so to speak. Yeah, it doesn't uh, translate. Has come out here. He's going to be part of the schools program yeah. for the whole exhibition. We have about two and a half thousand school kids come through the program. Yeah. with free and subsidised artist-led sculpture making workshop. And he's from Sicily and he's fallen in love with the exhibition and back here for the second year in a row. Let's go into the bits <clears> where <throat> everyone wants to talk about yeah. now, and this is. That's not art. That's rubbish. All yeah. Right, here we go. Yeah. Yeah. I can have holding one up. It's from Austria. It's called the Dampier Couple. This it's person has found two, two rocks, rocks by a railway track <laughs> and brought them and put them on the beach. Okay. Now let me start by saying <laughs> he's actually polished part of them. Yeah. That's oh, right. Oh, 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 the oh, 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 beauty of, of them. But you know what he's loving to say? He's saying he's rescued those rocks from the crusher. So he's actually, otherwise they'd be just blue metal under Dave, our tires. Come on, he's just, make, he's just making up the numbers. What a story come that on. is. Okay, well, let's leave that alone because mm. no one's buying what you just said. Let's go to Jennifer <laughs> Cochran, who's from WA. Her sleeper stacks, she is uh, using railway sleepers. On their and end. And she basically just ran them in the earth on their end. That looks like three just poles. I, the next door they're building next to me, there are three planks of wood leaning on the fence. Can I bring them down yeah. too or what? Yeah, you can, but they won't be in the exhibition. We'll take them well, away. Well, how does this so, get in? So how, then how did this get in? in? But what is the difference? Say? What does it say? I, I, I dare you. Go up next. Stay with them. Stay with them and see the beauty of the timber. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> very yeah, but she didn't make the culture. timber. But is it supposed they, to say anything? She just picked them up yep. and put them on their end. Yep. Oh, Sean, why do you explain the, the photo that I'm looking at right now? This is the next one. Oh, see, I don't, hot, I don't hot, hate this. Tin cans or something they just smashed in together. A bunch of metal rubbish bins glued together. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. It's by Lubo McLeay from Slovakia. Okay, yeah. you know what? There's about 20 garbage right. bins and they're unreal. Yeah, yeah okay. Look, this I, one I, is I the one that gets me. This is from Olga Saronis from WA. It's called With You in Red and it is... A chair. A chair. It's just a chair. A normal-sized chair sit- with a bit of velvet on the ass of it. And you can sit on it. It looks like something you've taken off uh, the Verge collection. Now, okay, David, there's going to be about 20, There's going to be about 20 of them oh. right down oh, the Oh, so what, it's a function centre? <laughs> <laughs> 
right down the end of the beach and just sit down and right. contemplate. Oh, okay? Yeah, on, but like, mate. what did you take a park bench out come to put on, these Dave. in? Like, the, that, that, that facility already exists, <laughs> yeah, yeah, David. Yeah, yeah no, okay. I mean, each to their own. But, um, <laughs> right. so, <laughs> that's a story. So, I think you guys did set me up with being too nice for too no, long. No, 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 we, we, we talked about a lot of fantastic ones. There are yes. a few rubbish ones. Now, I just want to come into a disturbing theme that I think you need to keep your eye on for the future because okay. I don't realise you'll. You, I don't think you know how many you're letting in. Ready? Mm-hmm. So, guys, I'm going to show you a, a whole lot of photos here. Mm. Firstly, here is a metal thing on top of a rock. Mm. The next one, a, a metal, metal thing, thing on top, top of, of a rock. rock. The next one, something on top of a rock. Here's a rock on top, on top of, of a rock. rock. <laughs> here is a <laughs> metal, two, two metal on things <laughs> on top of a rock. Here is a pointy triangular metal thing <laughs> on top of a rock. Here is a shiny metal thing on top of a rock. And uh, there is more of the things that are on top of David. rocks. David. Can I tell you about one of those? Which one? one the pointy one thing? Is it the one on top of the rock? <laughs> yeah, it's the one. It's the rock on top of the rock. One. The rock on top yes. of the rock. Yeah, yep. the rock on top oh, yeah, of the rock. That's by Takeshi the, Tanabe. Oh, that's like the water. That's quite lovely. But the one by Tata Ota. Yeah. Um, Tata Ota. The, he split the top rock. So the top rock's actually two rocks on top of a rock. But what he's done in splitting the, the top bit of the, the basalt is kids have then written messages to the future. And then the top half of the top half of the top of the rock has been put on top of the second half on top of the rock and both of them have been put on top of the rock. Do you know what, David? You know what's funny about this is that that wasn't one of the examples Nathan had that of things on rocks. That wasn't. That wasn't. But next year I've decided that I'm going to put a rock on top of something. Oh. oh. Get, on, put a rock on top of a piece of metal. You gotta get I in, have mate. flipped the script. David Do you want to commission Handley. it now, David? Do you want to commission it now? David Handley. Uh, yeah, yeah, go for it. <laughs> Do you want to know where these um, start from, though? Where? It's the, 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 the bottom rock <laughs> actually comes from the artfully placed uh, stones in Japanese and Chinese gardens. No one um, cares, so you'll, David. You'll see, you'll see that a lot of these are from Japan. Yeah. And that's, where they, that's where this starts from. Okay, um, so they're all using rocks. Was cheaper because you can just yeah, go out the front yard yeah. and just grab one. Well, cost of living. We, lo- yeah. we love your work, <laughs> David. As you know, we always appreciate the fact that you front up to talk to us in spite of every year the conversation but going. Can I way. tell you? Oh, so you, um, our, our seal of approval is yes. there are or there are more yes. good yes. Lots more pieces than yeah, ever. Yeah, there than are. Ever. There are. Get and, down there and check it out. And at least we're talking about art, right, David? <laughs> yeah. No, it's good. I love it. I mean, one of the reasons why people like the show is they come down and they yap about it as they want. Yeah. Yes. Um, and. Almost everyone will find something they really like. Yeah. And usually, unlike you guys who bring it to my attention, mm. usually people just walk past the ones they don't like. No, no, no. Oh, right. <laughs> ask, ask for David Handley and, 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 and tell him what you think. And remember my rule as well, David, for the future, if a piece of art can fit in a bin, it should go in the bin. <laughs> <laughs> Bad news for Fabergé eggs. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you are asking people that if they do head down to make a donation to support so that it can come back again next year, yeah, David? Yeah, no, the people of Perth have been great with this and we're mm. raising about 100 grand a oh, year. Oh, that's awesome. That's yeah, good. Yeah, five dollars person, voluntary contribution, ten a family. Oh, that's and the great. first port of call for this money is the hard costs for the artists that they haven't been able yes. to cover, and yep. so that's covering yep. the rocks that go on yep. top of the rocks. Well, yeah, 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 and also that, that chick that hired all those chairs. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> they, have, they have to go back to the church hall afterwards, though. <laughs> David, thank you. You've as got always. me laughing my head off. <laughs> we'll talk to you next year, David. Thank you. Work, Dave. Thanks for the ears of Sculpture by the Sea. Go down and check it out. Nathan, Nat and Sean in podcast form. We know you've got really sharp reflexes, but sometimes they work against you when something's falling or you just go and pick it up and it's dangerous, like a cactus with a whole heap of spines yeah. embedded in your palm. Yeah, Bad you news. You don't grab it by the pointy bits. No, you don't. Hey, James. Hi, how you going, guys? Good, James. James, are you calling us from Dunsborough? No, mate, I actually drive up and back uh, three, four days a week to Perth for my, our business is up in Perth. So oh, well, yeah, you, in you, you commute from Dunsborough? Yeah, mate, yep. Yeah, well, blinded does the same. Yeah, the show, best the of both worlds, eh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. yeah. Well, so, so going into this, we sort of hate you because you live in Dunsborough yeah. and we want to. So anyway, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> yeah, so I was uh, unloading a truck at one of our warehouses and uh, had a guy delivering some bedding to us. Uh, had a set of side rails for a bed that was leaning up against the side of his truck. I've turned around to walk away and I've, I don't know, Spidey senses told me something has fallen behind me, so I've spun around and uh, this rail box had fallen, went to grab it and it's torn the 
muscle off my bicep. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. So so you, you, put, you tore the tendon, tendon off the bone, yeah? Yeah, it was pretty hectic, eh? Hey? Oh, well, it's still all bunched up now, so it's still yeah, still never been the same. Did so you what get, happens did you is get the surgery? muscle then comes yeah. like comes oh, it's right all up bunched like that. up yeah. Like, yeah. Like, a, like a sock stuck up in your yeah. pants. Yeah, 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 pretty much. Yeah, it was, it was insane. James, did you have surgery? No, I didn't, mate. No, oh, it's tough no it wonder out. that looks so gross. Still got, still got, yeah, it does, mate. Oh, it's sure, that looks so gross. Oh no, but you, 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 you said, I've seen <laughs> them and they're not. They're, they've well, been you, operated on. They still look weird lose, as. Yeah. And you lose strength. Think about obviously, that. Yeah, you can't yeah. use your bicep. Um, James, not a not not a not a thing that I have to worry about. Um, I have nothing to bunch up. <laughs> Long it would be like, just like a shoelace. <laughs> it wouldn't be. It would be it would look like a pimple. <laughs> good on you, James. Thanks, buddy. Sarah's in Coburn. Hello. Hello. How are you? Great, oh, good, Sarah. Sarah. Okay. Did you instinctively grab or catch something? I did. I did. This was a few years ago. Uh, at the time, I had three young children and I had brand new carpet. So I was quite protective of the carpet. <laughs> anyway, I had gone back to work part time and I was there in front of my classroom teaching. One of the kids walks up to me, Miss. I don't feel well. She's green in the face. Next minute, projectile vomit oh. just comes out, and my instincts just went into override. Grab forward, grab and caught the vomit. Ended up <laughs> all in my hand. All Did you? Over my that is a mother's instinct well to protect done, Sarah. to protect her carpet. <laughs> the, but this was the school carpet, so this wasn't even new carpet. Oh, this no. was a really but worn just, old yes. carpet. But you, it just it, it was, was just the, in your brain at the time. Got to protect the carpet at all costs. Any was. carpet. You caught yes, a child's vomit. Sweet. Oh. <laughs> I mean, Just sit with that for a if second. If only that was a skill that you could transfer into making some money out of. Do you know what I mean? Because you deserve it. God, no that's one. That's amazing. No one catches spew like Sarah, they no, say. That's oh, what they mate. say. Spewy hand, Sarah. Oh. Uh, thanks, Sarah. Maddie's in Southern River. Hello. Hey, morning. How are we? Hey, good, good Maddie. Buddy. Okay. What happened to you? So uh, I was 18, I just finished school and I was studying chefing and uh, the, our teacher was uh, teaching us how to sharpen our knives. Mm, yes. And as I've passed him my knife, he was using me as an example, he sort of like banged it on the side of the table and when it dropped, just just put my hand down to grab it, <sighs> caught it by the blade. Oh. And if you know, chefing knives, they're razors. Yes. yes. So it uh, sliced straight into my middle finger, yeah. uh, straight through the tendon oh. and... Now that I had surgery, not long after, the surgeon came in and said, it doesn't look too flash, we're hoping oh, it'll heal. Yeah. But it didn't, so now whenever I'm walking around and hold something, I'm giving somebody the finger. So oh, oh you've got, got a nub. Just... finger from me. It stands at attention 24-7. Yes. Oh, it stands no, at no, attention. No, 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 you, you can't bend it. Sorry. You can't bend it. Because of the tendon. Oh, yeah. I cannot bend my middle finger, so... If I'm ever ever carrying anything, it looks like I'm giving someone the finger. You don't you don't ever want to get done for anything and then be on TV leaving yes. court because people are going to think that you're yes. being an asshole to oh. yeah, unrepentant. Yeah, Maddie. If I'm uh, if I'm on TV leaving court, I think the finger's the least of my problems. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, Maddie, talk to us about your life. What would you be in for? <laughs> He's an upstanding citizen. <laughs> Pulling the finger at the cops, obviously, is a problem. Hello, Mandy. Hi. Hey, Morning, Mandy. Mandy. Okay, what happened, Mandy? Well, it's, it's Christmas Eve, and, yeah. and my tradition is to um, have a few bottles of champagne on Christmas Eve. Yeah, well, no, why wouldn't no, I? That's a very good tradition, yep. <laughs> so I'm in a bottle of Dom and uh, decided <laughs> to glaze the ham. Yeah. Uh, full big ham, got the rind off, I'm scoring it, um, and, you know, it's a bit slippery, and the knife falls. And I instinctively just put my leg out to catch the knife. Your oh, leg, leg, yeah, Mandy. I do that with glasses oh, sometimes. Okay. I've done falling. that with scissors, and yeah, never, do it all the, time. The, the sharp bit never got me. So what happened? How did it, how did that end up? So I've looked down and gone, well, that's not good. I've got a knife stab in my calf, and uh, <laughs> put my hand over it. <laughs> Hobbled to the front door and yelled out to my husband for a little bit of a hand, and he thought he just wanted, I just wanted him to put the ham in the oven or something. Yeah. I need a hand. Of it sounds like you're saying, I need a ham. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and he's just like looked at it and gone, nah, you're going to have to figure it out yourself and throwing a bandage at me. And I've just sat down, put my leg up, and kept drinking my bottle of Dom. Did Can you I get... just 
say something, Mandy. Yeah. I read an article yesterday that made worldwide news that Bradley Cooper, who was dating Gigi mm. Hadid, uh, he opened up a car door for her, right? Mm. So that made worldwide news. You had a yep. knife in your leg and your partner said, take care of it yourself. <laughs> yeah, here's yeah, a band-aid. Here's a band-aid, yeah. Like, what, what more do you Chuck want? Chuck it on. Chivalry go, Mandy. is dead. Oh, Mandy, that's beautiful. But, I mean, at least you had champagne to fix yeah. it. And Dom, Dom by Perry. the way, yeah, fan- doing you, you well. You fancy. Uh, Matt's in Rockingham. Hello. How are you going? Good, right, man. Maddie. Uh, okay, what happened? I had my vasectomy a couple of weeks ago, and two days afterwards, yes. I dropped a folder and instantly went to catch it. Yeah. And as I was going to catch it, everything in my body said, not nah, not happening today, and dropped me to the floor in the middle of office work. <laughs> uh, as simple as a folder. <laughs> and a folder, you absolutely can let that land like, on the ground. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but that's the way there. How are you going to hurt yourself with a folder? Mm, no, oh. that's, that's how, because... <laughs> Matt, that's so. I'm, I'm cringing yes. already. So many people say, "Oh, it's a piece of cake getting a vasectomy," and then there's the other half who go, "Nah, this is just not uh, good at all." Going through it was fine. I was a little bit uncomfortable for a few days afterwards, but yeah, two days yeah. later, trying to catch a folder, and considering <laughs> so, it's only A4 folder, I was yeah. sitting there on the floor, and my boss was laughing at me. No, <laughs> so, so, Matt, so Matt. Matt, is it even just as hard to get up from that position sitting on the floor in office works after a vasectomy? Yeah, it wasn't. <laughs> It was not great. The boss was laughing at me for a 30 seconds before he thought he'd try to help me. <laughs> what, yeah. like giving you a frozen piece? La- or? La- laugh first, then help. That's the way it goes. Nathan, Nat and Sean is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au. Nova.